Okay, in today's quick tip, I'm gonna go over a couple of things I just came up with this morning that are gonna help out when dressing the edge of a half inch plank to be fit on a boat. And I'll show you this one here. This is a mahogany plank that I'm cutting and fitting right now for this 22 foot Chris Craft. And what I do is I took the old plank that I'm replacing, I laid it on here, traced out the boundaries, and this is the edge that I'm gonna fit first. With a pencil line, I'll do that, and then I'll take a, some blue tape and run the blue tape on there. It's easier for me to see, and if there's any dips or humps in that arc, I can kind of straighten it out with the tape. And then what I'll do is I'll take it and run it through the bandsaw, just proud, and then I'll take my low angle block plane, this is a 16 and a half Stanley, and I'll work that material down just proud of the, of the line. And then I'll take a hardboard, usually with 40 grit and an 80 grit, and I'll take the 80 and I'll kind of smooth that arc out. The sandpaper helps you to smooth it out. Plus, with this plank, um, with this plank, the, there's a lot of figure in it, and the grain reverses. You can see how this grain reverses. So, um, so this really helps to dig through. If you were to take that plane on a piece of wood like this, when you're pretty close to that line, uh, there's a good chance that you're going to take big gouges out. On, on other pieces of mahogany, the plane will be just fine. But on this one, for instance, I had to take it even over to the spindle sander and work this down uh, just about to the line and then, and then I'll sand it in. So the first thing I wanted to show you and, uh, is, is how I turn this low angle block plane into what's called an edge trimming plane. This is my Veritas catalog. And they sell what's called a, a, an edge trimming plane, and they sell a right and a left handed. And it's basically just, it, it's a plane that has a 90 kind of built into it, cast into it. So when you're running on the edge, you can keep that edge 90, and then they put a, they, they skew the blade in there. And I've always wanted these, and I'll probably still end up getting them. But I was thinking to myself this morning, you know, why couldn't I do that by basically double side taping this is a one, two, three machinist block to the bottom of here, to the bottom of my plane. So, and first before I get into that, I'd like to just mention, when, I, when, when the piece of wood will work with me and I could use a hand plane like this, which is most of the time a mahogany, I like to use it and I, I just freehand it. And if you do that enough, you'll get good at getting this edge 90. And uh, what I do is I keep a machinist square with me and I'll do it on this, here's a, here's a scrap piece of wood. You know, if you hold this, and, and if you're conscious of how you're holding this and everything, usually you're, you're pretty good at it, and I'll, I'll keep a machine to square just to make sure that I'm 90. If I'm a little bit off, I could, I could take and, uh, and uh, just concentrate on one edge, one edge or the other to get this square. So it's probably a good idea to learn how to do it freehand, just so um, just so you can you know just so you get practice at it and you can do it. But uh, so a, a plane like this, I think, will be real handy because you know you, you really don't there you really don't have to think about it too much. You lay it on there if you want to take a, a bunch of passes at once. Um, and you've got you've got you've got something on there that's going to keep this 90. I think it's going to be real helpful. So what I did was, and it's very simple to do. I just took this machine block. You could probably use a piece of wood, you know, a piece of oak if it's cut cut real nice and square. And instead of putting it straight on like this, I figured, well, I'll try to do like they do with their planes and skew it a little bit. So I put this up to my wood, and I just take it just like this. And just press it in. It's probably not as skewed as much as theirs, but there it is. So if I'm taking a bunch of passes, I can kind of, it's got a pretty good feel to it. I know I'm up against there. And put the square on there and it's, it's dead 90. So I think this is gonna be real handy and it's easy to do. Uh, I've got three, three or four more planks to fit on this boat, and I'm sure there's going to be pieces where the, the grain will work with me, and I could just use this and 
just like the, the ones in the book here. And I could even switch this if I wanted. If I wanted this to be on the other side, I could make it right or left-handed. So it's just something simple that you could do, and it's really effective. And you're gonna you're gonna maintain a 90 on there. So that was the one thing I wanted to show you in this quick tip. The other thing was something that I, I just came up with this morning. I was looking through that. I have a, a Kennedy toolbox I bought at um, I bought a, at a yard sale. And the other one I bought from my boss, my old boss, and it had a bunch of, the one had a bunch of machinist tools in it. Well, this here, there's a 90, and I thought, on this piece of wood in particular, the, where the grain was, uh, the grain was kind of reversing in it, I, I took it over to the spindle sander, got it close, and then my process would be put it in the vise here and just work it down with this, this hardboard with 40 grit on it. So after coming up with that plain idea, I thought, well, I remember that I had this, and I thought, well, why couldn't I just stick some 40 grit on there? And you can see I'm just proud of the line here. And the big advantage with this is I could have the plank right in front of me. I could see it here, as opposed to it being in the, in the vise. I'm always having to kind of lean down and bend over and look and then get back up. Well. Once I get that close to the line with either the plane or my spindle sander, this thing here is great because I could just I could just ride this surface on the back and I know it's going to be 90 because these planks fit the other planks always at a 90. They're, they're, it does vary a little bit when you get up front, but in general the bottom planks and the hull side planks, they usually always fit 90 to each other. So it's a big advantage to have something like this. I don't even have to think too much. I just have to put the pressure and it. I could hold it in my hand real nice here. And I could work right down to that line. Now, this isn't meant for taking down, you know, an eighth of an inch. It, you know, you use your plane or another sander to get it down close. And then where you see that, that little bit of wood, you just work it right down to the edge of that tape line and you know you're 90. I don't even have to put a square on it. This basically is a square. And when this sandpaper gets dull, you just switch it around. And these are such small pieces of sandpaper. I just cut them out of my file paper and, uh, and use them. So it's a, it's a great tool, I think. I'm gonna be using it. So there it is. That'll do it for the, the quick tip on on dressing these these plank edges at an at 90 at a 90 degree angle using my homemade edge trimming plane and then this sanding jig okay okay one last thing I wanted to mention on this 90 degree sanding block was that after you after you get this material down to your line with that 40 grit you put the 80 grit on there and then just smooth it out. So this this is all done. I'm worked down right to that line, and it looks it looks real good. And this thing worked awesome. And one thing I wanted to to mention also, when you're sanding like this, I mean the one drawback of this is it's such a, a small piece of sandpaper. You're going to have to change it out, but I think it's well worth it. And obviously you have to try to keep the sawdust from clogging up the sandpaper. But I noticed even on the 40 grit, when I was sanding like this, if I skewed this just a little bit, it really seemed to cut. And I'll show you the back side of it. See, I'm still 90 to everything, but I just, I'm using a different, different part of that sandpaper. Now when this half gets wore out, I'll just take this. This is pressure sensitive. I'll just reverse it. But it just seems like right there, it's flat. If you just skew it a little bit, it really seems to cut a lot better because you're using, you know, different part of the sandpaper, but so that's just one more tip on using this. After the 40 grit, go with the 80 grit and uh, this one's done. Now, that's not to say that this plank is going to fit perfect. I'm going to put it on there and where I need to take a little bit more, I'll make marks on here. And then I'll go back to my 40 grit and just 
uh, sand off the material where needed. So I just want to start the camera and show you that that last little bit on that that 90 degree sanding block. Okay. Okay, I'm going to shoot one more clip on that 90 degree sanding block. I've been using this all day and it's really worked out nice. I like it and I remember that I had another one in the box there so I took it out and I mounted some 80 grit to it so now I have a 40 and 80 grit so I don't have to keep switching back and forth. And then I noticed that these these holes are threaded through here. They're they're 5 6 they're, it's a 5 16 thread. So I took apart an old hand plane and cut a couple of carriage bolts and now I have handles on this. So you can still hold it like this if you want. But you could use the handles too and I don't know it's, it's turned into a, a nice tool. So I thought I'd show that. Um, if you happen to find any of these or you know a machinist uh, you can get a set of these and then put the handles on with the sandpaper and it just helps you to keep that that edge at 90 degrees. Okay?